This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. Let's time travel for a second. The year is 2025. It's January 20th. Donald Trump has just been elected for a second term as president of the United States. The numerous legal cases couldn't apparently keep him down and in fact, only made his supporters go harder for him. The media, unable to learn the lessons of the past, spent an outsized amount of time reporting on President Biden's cognition and how no one really likes or trusts Vice President Kamala Harris. And now Trump is set to take his place back in the White House. And while the media didn't learn lessons from the past, Trump's 2025 team absolutely did. There are no more anonymous New York Times op-ed writers reassuring Americans that despite what they see, there are people around Trump reeling in his worst impulses. There are no more Vice President Mike Pence's ready to sabotage Trump's authoritarian impulses and demands to stay in power. No, it is Trump in the halls of power, where he will remain possibly forever until another authoritarian strongman takes over. That is, if conservatives succeed with Project 2025. Every election cycle, we hear the oft-repeated phrase, this is the most important election in your lifetime. This is the most important election of our times. This is the most important election in our lifetimes. This November's elections are more important than any I can remember in my lifetime, and that includes when I was on the ballot. And we can't let them change the most important election in our lifetime. It's easy to get sick of it and also think it's BS when you hear it's the most important election in your lifetime more times than you can count in your lifetime. Now, this might be the worst segue in the history of segues, given that I just spent a fair amount of time shitting on the phrase, but this might really be the most important election in your lifetime, and that is because of Project 2025. Before we get into Project 2025, let's take a step back and think about how close we came to our democracy crumbling entirely under Donald Trump. Donald Trump and his loyalists who held positions all throughout the government in Congress, the Pentagon, the Secret Service and Homeland Security, and of course, spanning the entire Republican Party in disparate states all across the country, entered into a criminal conspiracy, one with another, to stand up and provide aid to a group of thousands of armed insurrectionists who attempted to overthrow the United States government in order to see Donald Trump extra constitutionally and extra democratically inserted as president, despite losing the 2020 election by 7,060,347 votes. In addition to this effort, Trump and others attempted to defraud the United States and her people by putting forward a fake slate of electors, which they hoped would cause Vice President Mike Pence to refuse to certify Joe Biden's win. There have now been dozens of indictments related to these alleged anti-democratic criminals, and if not for a scant handful of individuals who were slightly more loyal to the Constitution than they were to Donald Trump, this plot may have been successful. Which, by the way, Trump and his team know this. They won't make the same personnel choice mistakes next time. So let's talk about that, the lessons Trump and the conservatives around him learned and how they plan to improve their efforts to overthrow our democracy in the form of what they're calling Project 2025. If you haven't heard of it, it's a nefarious plot for conservatives to take back our government, not just through conservative policies, but also putting people into place who will do their bidding through executive action they hope the next Republican president will implement. Conservative organizations and activists have united to create this plan that will begin day one of the new Republican president's administration with the primary goal of dismantling the federal government and replacing it with one made in the image of the most extreme right-wing zealot you can imagine. This is beyond scary, especially as we face the likelihood of another Trump versus Biden rematch in 2024. And think of it, we're now less than one year away from the presidential election. 
So it's time to get serious and get to work. But that starts with educating yourself about the dangers of what is to come if a Republican, whether it's Trump, DeSantis, Ramaswamy, Haley, if a Republican, any Republican gets into power again. This is probably still sounding a little vague, so let's make the threat clear. Trump has made it a feature of his pledges for a second run at power to abuse power and be a dictator on day one. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. He has stated with zero Republican objection that the 2020 election, which was not stolen, gives him the authority to terminate all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the United States Constitution. Donald Trump has indicated on numerous occasions that he intends to reward those insurrectionists who attempted to keep him in power with full pardons. If I run and if I win, we will treat those people from January 6th fairly. We will treat them fairly. And if it requires pardons, we will give them pardons because they are being treated so unfairly. He's promised white nationalists to violate the United States Constitution by illegally ending birthright citizenship with the stroke of a pen through executive order. Going forward, the future children of illegal aliens will not receive automatic U.S. citizenship. He's announced his plans of an all-out assault on the First Amendment protection of the free press by investigating news outlets for treason with the ultimate goal of removing them from the public airwaves. And of course, he has also demanded on multiple occasions that he wants to have the government authorities murder suspected shoplifters and drug dealers. Very simply, if you rob a store, you can fully expect to be shot as you are leaving that store. Shot. When we catch a drug dealer, the only way you're going to stop it is the death penalty. And none of this is even touching on Republican plans to erase trans people and weaponize the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to increase abortion surveillance in their ongoing effort to criminalize reproductive health care. Now that we have this out of the way, and that's only a bit of it, let's get into specifics. Let's start with Schedule F a cartoonish name for a dangerous starting point in this radical plan. On October 21st, 2020, Donald Trump signed an executive order to implement Schedule F, and luckily, President Biden took office just a few months later, repealing Schedule F via executive order, taking us back to where we need to be. But what is it? Let's turn to Axios. Schedule F established a new employment category for federal employees. Tens of thousands of civil servants who serve in roles deemed to have some influence over policy would be reassigned as Schedule F employees. Upon reassignment, they would lose their employment protections. New presidents typically get to replace more than 4,000 so-called political appointees to oversee the running of their administrations. But below this rotating layer of political appointees sits a mass of government workers who enjoy strong employment protections and typically continue their service from one administration to the next, regardless of the president's party affiliation. An initial estimate by the Trump official who came up with Schedule F found it could apply to as many as 50,000 federal workers, a fraction of a workforce of more than 2 million, but a segment with a profound role in shaping American life. So in essence, Schedule F gives Trump the power to fire tens of thousands of government officials and replace them with people who are loyal to him and support his agenda. Think about that. Our government is made up of thousands of nonpartisan civil servants who move from administration to administration just trying to do their jobs. But with Schedule F in place, the next Republican president will be able to terminate these employees in order to hand over the positions to people who have been handpicked by conservative activists for how loyal and radical they are. Axios also reported here, Sources close to Trump say that if he were elected to a second term, he would immediately reimpose it. Trump, in theory, 
could fire tens of thousands of career government officials with no recourse for appeals. He could replace them with people he believes are more loyal to him and his America First agenda. And the search is on already. The Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank leading the charge on Project 2025, has been working with more than 50 conservative groups to compile what has been referred to as something akin to a conservative LinkedIn. That is a database of tens of thousands of Trump or insert another Republican here, loyalists who can easily facilitate the replacement process. According to reporting from the New York Times, Heritage usually compiles its own personnel lists and spends far less doing so. But for this election, after conservatives and Mr. Trump himself decried what they view as terrible staffing decisions made during his administration, more than 50 conservative groups have temporarily set aside rivalries to team up with Heritage on the project, set to start Friday. They have already identified several thousand potential recruits and have set a goal of having up to 20,000 potential administration officials in their database by the end of 2024, according to Kevin Roberts, the president of Heritage. Heritage has contracted the technology company Oracle to build a secure personnel database, Dr. Roberts said. And you may wonder why I keep saying Trump or insert another Republican here, and that's because yes, Donald Trump is the most clear and present danger here, but so is any other Republican who is eager to go along with the plan. Picking up right where that last New York Times quote left off, quote, in 2016, the conservative movement was not prepared to flood the zone with conservative personnel, Dr. Roberts said. On January 20th, 2025, things will be very different. This database will prepare an army of vetted, trained staff to begin dismantling the administrative state from day one. Heritage and its project partners have already briefed Mr. Trump and Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida and their teams, Dr. Roberts said, as well as staff members for the other current and potential candidates, including Nikki Haley, the former ambassador to the United Nations, the entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, and former Vice President Mike Pence. They plan to give private briefings to all conservative candidates. We've often heard Donald Trump refer to people in his old administration as snakes and traitors solely because they stood in his way, in the way of his autocratic impulses. But what happens when tens of thousands of people have been handpicked by these radicals to replace nonpartisan career government officials? What happens when civil servants are replaced en masse in some misguided attempt to root out the deep state. How quickly will we fall? And we don't need to take Axios' word for it or the New York Times' word for it or even the president of the Heritage Foundation. Trump himself has said that this is his plan. Watch him in a speech from Greensboro, North Carolina on June 10th, making it clear that he plans to purge anyone who stands in his way once he is reelected. This is the final battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. If we think about Project 2025 as a series of steps to abolishing democracy, I'm not sure what step Schedule F is, but it certainly isn't step one. This ball is already rolling downhill and it's picking up speed. With every person who works to undermine President Biden and downplay the threat from Republicans, that ball gets bigger and stronger and faster. We have less than a year to stop it because Schedule F is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Republican plans to abolish democracy and rebuild a system where they remain in power forever. Think I'm being hyperbolic? Donald Trump has already made it clear that he's out for revenge, retribution. In 2016, I declared, I am your voice. Today, I add, I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who have been wronged and betrayed, 
I am your retribution. I am your retribution. Trump made it clear again in an interview on November 9th when he said he will certainly indict his political opponents, his political enemies, when he's president again. If I happen to be president and I see somebody who's doing well and beating me very badly, I say, go down and indict them. Mostly, that would be, you know, they would be out of business. They'd be out. They'd be out of the election. They'd be out of business. They'd be out of the election. He knows what he's doing, and now there is an infrastructure to support him in every single one of his autocratic goals. I want Project 2025 to be the first thing you think of when you think about 2024 and the election. Project 2025 should be at the top of your list when you're thinking about which candidate to elect. While the left fights over whether Biden should run or who should replace him, whether he's too old or whether he's handling the Israeli-Palestine conflict appropriately, whether he's best suited to address the economy, we need to be able to balance pushing Biden to do what we want and need him to do with the very real possibility that this could be the election that decides the fate of our democracy. And while the left is fighting, the right is organizing, planning, working day and night to implement this agenda. Just a few months ago, the Heritage Foundation held a leadership summit and dedicated a significant portion of their time to Project 2025, specifically informing the conservatives and attendants of their agenda and making a firm call for recruitment to staff the cult surrounding the next Republican president. Things aren't gonna change unless you commit to serving our country. We wanna make sure that the plans that are in place have been vetted so that the person knows not only what argument and excuses come in their way, but what the answer is and have the trust of a movement-wide effort led by the Heritage Foundation to make sure that they know that it's credible and it's conservative. This time, we have a secret weapon. This time, we have Project 2025. By learning from the experience of former conservative appointees, we can overcome common obstacles and get things done. The reason I got involved is because I wanted to be part of a movement-led effort and Heritage Foundation has used their influence to be able to convene the movement. We can be ready to hit the ground running on day one of the next administration. In the wise words of Morton Blackwell, you owe it to your philosophy to study how to win. Project 2025 will ensure a conservative agenda is ready to roll on day number one. Make sure that we as conservatives are prepared to hit the ground running January 20th, 2025. To learn more, go to project2025.org. Hit the ground running. And they're well on their way, from conferences to summits to meetings with presidential candidates and an almost 1,000-page manual that's online for anybody to read. In fact, let's briefly cover Project 2025's 1,000-page manual and their stated pillars to advancing the goals of Project 2025. Quote, Project 2025 is more than 50 and growing of the nation's leading conservative organizations joining forces to prepare and seize the day. The axiom goes, personnel is policy, and we need a new generation of Americans to answer the call and come to serve. This book is functionally an invitation for you, the reader, Mr. Smith, Mrs. Smith, and Miss Smith, to come to Washington or support those who can. Our goal is to assemble an army of aligned, vetted, trained, and prepared conservatives to go to work on day one to deconstruct the administrative state. The project is built on four pillars. Pillar one, this volume, puts in one place a consensus view of how major federal agencies must be governed and where disagreement exists brackets out these differences for the next president to choose a path. Pillar two is a personnel database that allows candidates to build their own professional profiles and our coalition members to review and voice their recommendations. These recommendations will then be collated and shared with the president-elect's team, greatly streamlining the appointment process. Pillar three 
is the Presidential Administration Academy, an online educational system taught by experts from our coalition. For the newcomer, this will explain how the government functions and how to function in government. For the experienced, we will host in-person seminars with advanced training and set the bar for what is expected of senior leadership. In Pillar 4, the playbook, we are forming agency teams and drafting transition plans to move out upon the president's utterance of, so help me God. Assemble an army, aligned, vetted, trained, prepared, go to work on day one, move out. Are you listening? We have less than a year and the conservatives are already ahead of the game on this one. This is a government in waiting. This will be an immediate reshaping of our country in a way that will harm the most vulnerable among us. And it isn't just about Trump. We're, we're beyond Trump. Trump is just the guy who will stand in for the more determined and malevolent forces that want to capitalize on the cult of MAGA to fundamentally alter this democracy. So when you hear someone say that this is the most important election of your lifetime, I think it is. It really is true.